I'm still in this thought process of what we normalize. So I, uh, I went to a bar last night to see an amazing musician and I am starting to pay attention to that which was invisible to me. Um, I was the only single woman in the bar. There was one other woman, but she was part of a couple. There were um, between 10 and 15 men in the bar, um, patrons uh, that cycled in and out. Um, I noticed that when I walked into the room, I immediately scanned for allies. Um, other single women, um, men that seemed to be um, more aware, awake, feminine, gay maybe. Um, and I didn't see any. So I <clears throat> paid attention to my programming. I paid attention to what I automatically did and what I thought I was supposed to do. And I got myself a non-alcoholic drink because it didn't feel like it was a good situation to have any alcohol. Had to drive afterwards and I wanted my wits about me because I felt like I was alone in a kind of a dark bar that was going to be super loud and um, kind of crowded and people were in my personal space because it's a small bar and people are going to be in each other's space. And that doesn't feel like a good situation to me to drink alcohol because then I don't really have all of my senses like tuned in. Um, and I didn't feel like I was in danger at all. I mean, at all. But I'm still tuned to have all of my attention on my surroundings when I am alone, essentially, in a group of strange men. Um, it's definitely my programming. And then I sort of check my programming. It's like, well, I'm 45 years old. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not dressing to show off my curves because I don't do that because that, well, that like brings in attention that I'm not looking for. Um, you know, so I was wearing something kind of... Um, not form fitting, not showing any cleavage. So it's not like anybody would think that I was looking for attention sexually, um, but that doesn't stop people from hitting on you. And not that hitting on me is not welcome because sometimes it is. Um, but I was just listening to my programming and it was like, I had no idea the stuff was going on really. It's kind of invisible to me. It's sort of like accommodating like, you know, a joint that doesn't work all the time, you know, taking some pressure off of it. And putting pressure in other places. It's, it's kind of the same mechanism. And, it, and again, I'm really looking at this stuff because I want to see what we normalize, right? So nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing came close to happening except um, I, I noticed that when I got myself a seltzer and I put it down on the bar and I made sure it was in my eye line all the time because people do put things in drinks. I've, I've, um, I've been with people after they've had their drinks um, messed with and it's not pretty and I want to actively avoid that so I'm always kind of on guard with my drink I never leave it unattended which takes something you know and eventually I just like sort of gave my empty drink even though I would have enjoyed eating the ice cubes I gave my drink back to the bartender because I didn't want to babysit it anymore um, there was a moment when a, a gentleman who had to be 20 years younger than me got very in my personal space, um, feeling like he wanted to start a conversation. I wasn't really interested in any conversation. I was really just there for the music. Um, and I, the guy who was playing was about to play a good song. So I went over to the other side of the bar and I went to record it, um, realizing afterwards that I was sort of doing that so that I could put myself with my back against a wall in a corner so that I could take myself off guard because I was getting a little bit weary from being on guard. Um, and then I was perfectly in the eye, eye line sight of like the entryway then. And a little while later, there was a gentleman that was sort of hanging out in the entryway that was kind of making me uncomfortable the way that he was looking at me and not talking to me. Like, I don't mind if people come over and ask me, you know, where I'm from or what I'm up to or get some sort of read on me personally that whether or not they want to talk to me not really interested with the people who look me up and down and say, yes, I want to have sex with you with their eyes and then don't ever say anything. That's kind of creepy. Um, I 
and then I had to think about all of this stuff and how we actually get our sexual needs met in our society. And it's super complicated. Do I know if I actually have to be on guard? Do I know if I'm in danger? No, I don't know that. Um, am I the kind of person that would be preyed upon um, generally in a bar early in the night? Not really. Have I been preyed upon late at night in a bar? Absolutely. Um, I think once people have had enough to drink, they don't really care who they're hitting on or how they're comfortable they're making, how uncomfortable they're making people. Um, which is one of the reasons I don't stay out late. It's one of the reasons I don't wear form-fitting clothes. It's one of the reasons I never show cleavage. Um, I have really great looking cleavage. I just never show it off because it welcomes comments and looks and thoughts that are easily downloadable that I don't want to be dealing with really. Which is kind of sad because I have great looking cleavage. Um, I don't know. Made me sad though. The whole thing made me sad. All the sad people at the bar who really don't have a good conduit for getting their needs met also made me terribly sad. Um, because I don't know how I would want somebody to react to me anymore. I don't know how I would want somebody to approach me anymore. Um, you know, it's like we send text messages to ask people if it's okay to make a phone call. You know, that's like the level of consent that we're at right now as far as intrusion into conversations. Bars are complicated, especially when people are drinking. Um, I don't know.